Good evening. We have 7 o'clock. We have a quorum. We'll call a planning board meeting to order. First up for general information is Jim. Jim. I can't read your last name. I can't, yeah. I can't read your writing. Patrick Clooney and Patrick Clooney. Whoever. James Cunahan. I apologize. Jim, what is your last name? Cunahan. C O U N I H A N. Okay. I would never have guessed that. <laughs> okay, okay. What do you got? <clears throat> um, we are here from the Heirloom Collective. We are the project at 457 Russell Road, the medical marijuana dispensary. And okay. We are here to discuss the as built plan as compared to the original plans. Okay. And we were asked to attend the meeting this evening. What's the street address again? Uh, 457 Russell Street. Okay. There, um, we were told by um, Commissioner Nyhart that a letter from our engineering firm explaining the differences was provided to you folks, but I'm going to guess it's not the case. I, I, haven't, I haven't seen anything. I haven't seen one. There, I saw the original letter, I think, to the building inspector saying the project was completed. I apologize. That's the only copy I have. Yeah, okay. I Again, I apologize for what we told it was sent to. Curb cuts are a little bit different. Sunoco sign was removed. The new sign will be 15 feet tall but off, and off the property line. It'll be externally illuminated. The biggest thing is, oh yes, I remember you called me and said about that. You're not, the fence is no longer required around the uh, back of the building? Yes, yeah, so there's a little bit of confusion in the way our engineer created that statement. The fences are not required by the law or the regulations. When we originally started the discussions with the Department of Public Health, which at the time was the, the regulator for the medical marijuana program, it's now the CCC, the Cannabis Commission, the inspector, without ever being out at the location, said he'd like to see a fence around the back if that's where deliveries are going to be made. When he came out in April of 2018 to do his first site visit as part of a step in the process called the Ar Architectural Review, he felt like the fence would actually impede line of vision, and he said his preference would be no fence and extra cameras on the doorways so that everything could be seen. And then in addition to that, he pointed out that there are at least five dispensaries in the state where they just bring the product right through the front door. There's no fence at all unless you're So the other one, review again with us, where, where, would the, where the original proposal was to have fencing. And I, again, I apologize. Okay, I guess. I got ones. Oh, okay. We, we do have a... A larger one, but I can give this one to you. Okay. It was on the back, back or south side exactly. of the property because that's where the parking lot is going to be for the new uh, apartment complex in right. Amherst. And so there was concern about a crossover. Right. Actually, it was, I think it was your, your suggestion to put a fence up to keep. No, I think there was a suggestion from a board member. That's correct. That there should be a fence there. Uh, uh, the uh, butters never asked for a fence. Okay. But somebody concurred. I think they concurred. When John well, I think asked. the suggestion for the fence was along the whole back property line that the board member had made. Right. Yeah. And it was yeah. determined by right. the board. Yep. Okay. You want to look at this bigger one? Yeah, that's fine. I'll just show yeah. Actually, I think it's doing the same. That's okay. Well, one is all we need. So, this would be where the door is. And so there's not a lot of space back there. And when the compliance officer looked at it, he thought that it would be an easy place for people to hide, which is their concern. So this was to have been the fence? Yes. It the was area. the whole area, though. Yeah. It was just a small portion of it. Okay. And there's now three cameras. That so when your property line, this is the property line, mm -hmm. and this is the snow storage. Mm -hmm. So some snow storage is mostly over. So that's all pavement, so it's no storage from all over there. And the wetlands have been approved by the people across the hall, Conservation Commission? Correct. So, well, I don't have a problem with the, with the fence being removed. I mean, if it's not required, they're going to have extra cameras. If it turns out to be a problem, it can, they can be... It turns out to be a problem. We will want uh, Exactly. Yeah. 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 I thought you were no, concerned about the... Are, uh, are, you, are you going to go for a... Right now you're a medical CBD. Are you going for THC for mid -tope? We're not just, We're not CBD. We're medical THC. Oh, you're medical yeah, THC. Correct. 
We do not sell CBD. You have to have a separate license to sell CBD. You're not allowed to sell CBD under a medical marijuana license under state law. And they just changed the law. Oh, I, I, I always thought medical was CBD. There are traces of CBD in medical marijuana. I know that. I realize. But you can't sell a CBD product under a medical marijuana license. See, I always thought medical was a CBD product. That was always my, my impression, so no, it's, it's, not, like, it's not true. It's like Carter's little liver pills. Remember those? No, no, I, I, want, I, want to talk, I, don't want, I don't want jokes here. I want to find out yeah, the real, so, real story. Uh, I, all joking aside, we are in a strange period in time where there is more clarification around the sale of THC to the public in the state of Massachusetts than there is for CBD, CBD being non-psychoactive. There is mass confusion about the law currently, not just in the state of Massachusetts, but Massachusetts and countrywide, because of the FDA's position that CBD is not to be put into a food product or a beverage or sold with any medical statements about its value whatsoever. Okay, so CBD is ointment and stuff like that and, and things. No. It can be. It comes in many different forms. Okay. But it's a different compound. Right, I, I realize it's predominantly really derived by the hemp plant as opposed to the marijuana plant. Right, right. I, I realize that my, my brother is involved in that. So he's actually he's worked for some big company in, in uh, Chicago and oh. Ohio for it. Okay. So the question before us is, yeah. remove the fence and substitute it with uh, cameras? Correct, yeah. Already in the okay. And the driveway, the original orientation was different, but then an dot came through, put in granite curbs and new sidewalks all along the length of it, yeah. and all of a sudden they don't want that changed. So yeah. that's fine. Yeah, okay. that's, that's fine. That this that's part that. is not going to be affected by the reconstruction. Right. Yeah, they stopped way short of them. I mean, not a problem to do it. No, no. And there are other minor changes. That, uh, yeah, there's the but right, basically with the parking drive, like, like you just said, the, the radius is a curb island on the front of the building, and an associated bollard lights were removed from the project and replaced with stripped, slate, uh, stripped. Islands. I think I should say striped islands. Or it's supposed to be striped when yeah, it says striped. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and an attorney wrote this? Uh, an engineer. Oh, engineer. Oh, engineer. 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 Well, engineer. Most engineers can't spell. <laughs> this one can't. <laughs> so I'll make a motion to accept the changes. Second. Any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes. Thank, Thank you very much. much. We appreciate could, your time. Could you get copy of those things um, to ha planning and have the MA.org so they'll put them into the uh, decision. Absolutely. So just to be clear, you Actually, want the, those, those three those three sheets you have in your hand. Do you want this copy? I have copies. Uh, if you could scan it and send it, it to us, that would be fine. We'll do. But just to clarify, you want the Wilcox and Barton letter and the as plan? Yes. Okay. Yes. Yeah, I'll get that to you tomorrow. Okay. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you, gentlemen. Thank you. I guess last question, should we reach out to uh, Tim Nyhart now about what I'll do? Oh, can I have that letter back from it? Oh, yes. Uh, it's right there, too. No, sorry. He has a problem. Right there. Mike has a problem. Oh, Mike has a copy. Oh, okay, perfect. Very We're good. Okay. Actually, th this is the original. You would probably want that for your file. Or is that just a color copy? I think it's like just, a color. Color. just a color copy, okay. You know, you could talk to Bill, to uh, Tim Nyhart, but I'm going to fill, we've got a simple form that we fill out when we make simple votes like this. I'll put a copy in his mailbox tonight, so he'll have that, so he'll know that we voted the okay. way we have, and then you can proceed with whatever you're going to do with Tim. Got it. Okay. Awesome. Thank you very much. I appreciate it, everybody. Have a good evening. She's upcoming on the list. Yeah. Oh. Okay. I thought maybe you were a new uh, sister or 
<laughs> Your name's again, sir? Mike Sarzinski. Okay. One of the non Irish. I'm one of the Irish, kind of like how they celebrate. Phil Shumway. Hello. Uh, seeking permission to put a uh, swimming pool, in ground swimming pool in my back. This will be, we granted him, he's uh, on uh, the Huntington Road? Uh, Breckenridge. 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 Yep. Breckenridge Road. Very small subdivision. Very small subdivision. With he, 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 emailed me, he emailed you, Bill, and I didn't respond because I said I don't want to respond. I don't yeah, no, even know it's sure. mine or it will probably have no problem proving it. I just want to make sure that I don't take it upon myself to do that. Yep, no problem. And I did have uh, well, that's in is there not the footprint of the house? No, it's, it's, it's within the uh, it's, it's within this property. Within the property. They, but they, not not in the designated area that was considered open space. We had no, that's it. It is in the it's in the open space. It's in the original envelope of where he said he could put up a building. I thought it was not. It's right on the where, line where it? of it's so so this is where the house is. Yes. And unfortunately this is what we had set with you folks many, right. many months ago. And then as we cleared the space that we came in and we asked for a, a bump back because they didn't want to be on top of the neighbors. And this unfortunately was only to be determined after we spent a lot of time clearing land, or otherwise we would have probably set this more back in the middle. So we're a little tight to this edge and I want to put something approximately right there. Right on the, the line. Yes, and I have had uh, Mr. Nyhart on site and he has uh, expressed that he's, he's okay with it. How about the neighbors? Have you contacted the neighbors? Uh, there is one house on this side that's approximately 1,200 feet away oh, yeah. from that side. Them out. Anyway. These, are these people aware of what's going to be done? The reason I'm saying that is because many times people come in and they get permission from us and the neighbors are all happy, this is what's going to happen, and then all of a sudden there are some changes made, and neighbors then have a tendency to go see a lawyer and they send us this. So if the neighbors, you don't know. <laughs> I have not spoken with any of the neighbors because uh, we're, if, we're a solid 500 feet away from the closest even boundary line there. So my yeah. recollection was the neighbors who did come were most concerned about the intersection with Breckenridge and where the construction vehicles would park during the clearing. Yes. yes. And they didn't want things being unloaded on a blind curve on Breckenridge with Big truck city in the road. Correct. Is yeah. your house built already? Yes. Okay. Yeah. We've had no issues with anybody. You know, we're quiet, reserved. It's you know, I purchased the place for privacy, and it's it's back there. It's you wouldn't even know it was there unless you knew it was already there. But it's just kind of a lesson to us because every time, not every time, but uh, when there are changes made, neighbors because they're not informed as they usually are when there's something going on, they get upset. You know, I'm, I don't think it's a big deal, but nevertheless... Uh, so we don't, we don't have to reopen the public hearing because the roadway is not changing. In a, sub, in a subdivision yes. approval, if the road changes, we have to reopen the public hearing. Mm -hmm. But if it's a question of intruding a little bit into the open space, um, do you know how much you're going to be over the line? Not much. I mean, we're talking something maybe 16 by 32 uh, with just a small walkway around it. Um, I mean, I could put it up here, but I think it would look ridiculous in the front yard, and then we would be in everybody's backyard, and that would be fully compliant and legal. We're, we're, with this, I'm putting it where it's completely... Where's the north arrow on this street? This is the street side of Breckenridge way out here. This uh, way so north would be back yeah. on okay. this side. Okay. So this puts it in a spot where no one could even see it. And my understanding for this whole purpose of this place was so that we wouldn't put five houses back there. 
it, at the time of where we were trying to be able to move forward with building, it you know it didn't come up of if I was going to be able or not be able to do a small recreational. And, and you own that lot too, right? I do. Okay. I don't see a problem. No. You know, if we, if we get one of these, the you defend it. The <laughs> sure. You know, we we let um, David Phil put chickens out on yeah. his protected open space. Well, mm -hmm. yeah, that's but that that's and this really that's just that's simply not a not buildable for another resident, but it's yeah. certainly okay for agriculture. And if any, any of these abutting neighbors had any issue with my pool being in the backyard, I'll tell them I'll gladly move it to the front. Yard. <laughs> okay, I'll make a motion to. Uh, to approve the intrusion of the pool into the open space. Second. Motion a second. Any discussion? All in favor, aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes. What? Wait a minute. Let's we get this for you to. What's your address, Phil? Uh, one Jackson Lane. One Jackson? Jackson Way or Jackson Lane? Lane. Lane. So this is north. On or these, so put the north at the bottom of the page. Whatever works. Sometimes it's easier to orient the plan so that it, it looks pretty and north may not be facing up like it's supposed to. But as long as there's an arrow there. All right. Can I have this? Sure. Thank you very, Thank you very much. much. Very good. Have Thank you. Night. What are they featuring Severus? School? Sharon Rice Stickles. Oh, Shannon, I'm sorry. Oh, Shannon. So, um, I spoke to Mickey, it was you on the phone, um, yes. the other day. So, I have a farm in Hadley. We've been um, renting um, Amy Sorrell's place and also um, Deb Wilda's place, the tree farm. So, we've been growing a lot of crops and livestock and expanding into cheese. And we approached Bill Benedict at 10 Rocky Hill Road about purchasing his farm stand. Um, and just basically doing continuation of existing use, which is um, farm stand store on the one side and on the other side. Um, he had ice cream and some small food items that he sold there, we would be um, doing something along that line as well. So, um, what's the address there? 10 Rocky Hill Road. And um, I remember there was a history behind that property, but um, I, I, I'm familiar with the zoning changes that have happened um, for agriculture use. So, just making sure before we actually start the purchase and sale thing that everything's going to be good to go. And you guys are okay with that. So you're going to reopen the ice cream stand? We're going to start off by opening up the farm shop section um, to yeah. sell our produce and other produce from um, some of the farmers I work with, mainly in Hadley. And then um, also, because um, we have there's a lot of renovations that have to be done, it's been used as basically a storage facility for a while. So we have to uh, update the, um, so phase one is get the farm stand open. What percentage of the stuff sold is going to be yours? Easily 51%. So it's going to be similar to the Barstow cook, or even uh, well, this boys' roots. Even yeah, it's going to be probably a little bit closer to what boys' roots are doing, but it's even different from all of those all together. We do we will have an, a, the uh, east west um, uh, commuter route from UMass and Northampton. We're very aware of that, which we're going to try and definitely cater to on the. Um, so we'll have coffee in, for example, for that. But um, we are going to. I have my own herd of milking cows, so we actually have plans for next year to actually be using some of our milk and also West's milk um, is the goal to um, make them do um, soft serve ice cream and then also some um, fresh cheeses. I'm a master cheese maker. And that'll be cheese you are making yourself? Yes. Um, I also am a food systems planner and we have either started or expanded on about 43 creameries around the world. So we'll be working with some of them as well. The question is, do we have to have a hearing? No. 
because this was a special, that was, no. this was, when it was originally approved, it was a fairly controversial item, and it had to go to the Zoning Board of Appeals. But when it went up to... And so then it went up, and then it went to town meeting, town meeting voted it down to, for a zone change. Correct. And so he shut down. He right. shut down. And a few years later, the state passed the agricultural exemption laws on farm stands because of almost this particular, well, it wasn't this particular one, but this added to the thing because there was a bunch of them in, a, in the state that were being shut down. And he, for whatever reason, decided to never reopen it. No, he we, has sold produce itself there um, more recently, too. I think it was about five to seven years ago as well. So he has actually continued the produce sales. I believe in the bylaws for Hadley, you can sell stuff within the town of, that's grown in the town of Hadley as well without special permission. Yeah, that, that's covered under 40A yeah. Section 3, uh, but cannot be controlled by zoning. That's the agricultural exemption. Mm -hmm. and, and I am a farmer. Yeah. So as long as you meet the... 5149. Well, it's it's more complex verbal formula than, than that. It's what, what you grow in your own land versus versus what you buy from others, and that has to hit a certain percentage. So, so it's traffic. You say you want to catch the crowd going to UMass in the morning. That's a very heavily traveled route. They come down 47, they come up Rocky Hill Road, and they're going to cut over I, your I property. I follow that route as well, yep. And then they're going to cut the coffee. Fact that, yes, there'll be coffee in the morning, clearly. So with Hadley cream. Park or, but parking may be a concern, exit, exit. how many cars? Oh. Yeah, you're absolutely right, Joe. However, yeah. if she meets the state formula, she's exempt. From traffic so, control? Yes. Right now. Right now, the way our zoning bylaws are written and the way the state is, I want to talk about this later tonight, um, that not because of this, but because of things I see coming down the horizon before we get into trouble. I got a few ideas. But in the case of this issue and Barstow's and Cook's, it's exempt, whether we like it or not. I did also approach, I am a regional planner, and I did approach our um, university program here at UMass and ask if one of the graduate students would actually also study that spot and make sure we do, because that is, I do not understand that it does back up as far as East Street. I was going to the words out of my mouth. Yeah, so I have actually asked them to figure out how we can actually approach this in a way that's not going to make it more of a nightmare, but like he says, I actually... Well, that's going to be a self-limiting problem, mm -hmm. especially on that street, because if people see it backed up, they're not going to get out of line to go in and see you on the way home. Mm -hmm. And exactly. in the, uh, the morning, I see the traffic more going towards UMass mm -hmm. than yeah. coming towards Northampton. I mean, there's, yeah. it comes both ways, but the heaviest traffic is towards UMass. In the morning, I agree. In the morning. So there's not going to be a problem with turning motions across. For people headed east, they will not have encounters with westbound cars. The westbound uh, backups are at you know, four to six. And three, that starts about three. Three, three, three to five. A reasonable person make a reasonable presentation, very knowledgeable in, in planning and zoning. But people always make these presentations. Then they say, but we want to do this. Oh, we didn't know that was not allowed. So. Once you get the permit, then it expands, and how do we control it? We can't. We, we can't. It'll be, uh, it, it's agriculturally exempt, so... The only thing would be is, is if we start to um, get past the point where we're, the, the percentage rule of what it is yep. that's yep. actually produced going over, and then I would ask, then I would have to present again and that would, as, a, as a special... That, that, that would probably not fly at that point, because... Boisverts are in a limited business district. <clears throat> this one's AR. So um, that's what supports their selling other products like right. beer and wine uh, mm -hmm. that they have dedicated a portion of their space to what is allowed like a grocery store. in agricultural, uh, which is allowed in limited business. And then they're using the agricultural exemption to justify the rest of it. Because they're technically a little larger than the 
maximum size we allow in agriculture in limited business. Mm -hmm. right. But um, and most of the stuff they sell in the store isn't their own anyway. Uh, at this point, I mean, they started out that way, but they've as they've expanded, great. In which I'm glad about it's less and less of their own. Business. Right, but that that's the first. Mm -hmm. They have a two thousand square foot allowance for non-owner grown stuff. Okay. And the balance, um, the restaurant and the maple production and which so on are covered by the agricultural exemption. So the non-owner allowance, that's 2,000 square foot, that's because they're in limited limit. business? Yeah, that's only in limited business. In limited business, you're not limited to your yeah, own diagrams, yeah. I'm just making note of that. So if the plan right now is to basically have the farm, I mean, he had the farm shop and then the ice cream shop. He bought Hershey's product and resold that basically in that spot. So if we actually sold, you know, had a food service section of that, I would have to still maintain that it's almost all my ingredients, or is that? You, you, For example, we're going to be bringing in coffee. You're, 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 you're asking a question that we can't answer. Okay, that's fine. Look at the state law. There's a state law specifically says how much has to be grown by yourself and within state. The other, yeah, I think it's 40, 51 percent, 50 percent. The other 49 percent can be anything. anything. Yeah, I saw this 51, okay. 49 percent. But you could be selling. Yeah, the other 49 could be. Can, that's where the ice cream comes in. Yeah. Because you know you're not. More than likely, you're not going to be raising your own ice cream. Actually, soft serving my cows. Well, you yes, start, you you start to make it down the road. That's another story, okay? But if you're buying Hershey's, that's that's mm -hmm. right. That would fall into the forty nine percent. The ice cream itself would actually end up being um, actually eighty five percent my own. That's fine. Okay. okay. What I'm saying is, if you bought Hershey's, I'm not saying anything about you. If you bought Hershey's, that would fall under the forty nine percent. If you if you're supplying your own ice cream, then obviously it falls under the first part of it. Yeah. And then so. two of the ice cream operations, that's not, I mean, even Maple Valley, that's not their own milk that's going into, and they have a farm shop as well, that's not their own milk, they have a co-packer make their own product for them yep. and they sell it. I believe they're AR there as well. But if it's grown within the state... So we're good, as long as okay. it's grown within the state. Yeah. You, you, gotta, you gotta read the state law yeah. on agricultural stuff like that. It's like Bill said, it's not cut and dry, it's, it's, it's complicated. 5149 is not going to be bad. The coffee will be the only thing that's really going to be. If you're going to serve Colombian coffee, I'll probably stop once in a while. Yeah, that's not a bad We have a Peruvian, a Sumatran, and another one that we're looking at from these women on cooperatives. So, that one of our partners actually works quite a bit with. So. Okay. okay. So it's pretty much that's the project. It's kind of a continuation. I don't really need to vote. It's just, you know, we're. Yeah, yeah, it is. Is. Oh, yeah, no, I don't think we have to Be aware, it. I'm just aware of what you're. You know, so if Tim has any question, if you anything, you'll just have him call Bill and myself and we'll agree to it. I'll see Tim tomorrow. tomorrow. So ultimately, it comes down to. Uh, I just have to do the stuff with the signs. I think it's all you said. It's the only thing we want to see in the sign. Yeah. Come back to us when you get a sign. You sign on your sign. The sign has to comply with zoning. Yeah. And then beyond <clears> that, going forward, you have to satisfy Tim as the zoning enforcement officer Correct. that you are compliant. Yeah, and I already spoke with him, and I'm going to go see the planning. Oh, the board helped. Right afterwards, and I already spoke with them as well. Okay. All set. Okay. Good. We'll still be good coffee. We'll be happy. Better ice cream. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Heiser. A and R plan, Aquafina Road, non-buildable recreation land. No frontage access over. Mr. Mr. Mitchell, I think it was a house piece. Yes, sir. We have a request from Mr. Zahowski to withdraw probably this parcel from 61A, right? Yes. Okay. But not from us, as he went to the Board of Health. I thought you were making me nervous. I mean, I mean the, the, the select board. I've been gone for a few days, and when I heard withdraw, I thought I was going to have to take the plan back. So, okay. so it's back of the road. South, uh, Connecticut River, Amphibia yeah, Road to north here, Connecticut River to south, 3.9 acres, not a buildable lot, no road frontage, access is going to be over this farm road. Floodway. Yes, sir. Where is it? Uh, pretty much all down there. 
I think it probably goes from the river. Flood plain or flood way? Flood way, yeah. Flood is, way. Is, uh, man, it all floods now. I mean, it all flows. If it's not all the way up to Aquavita, it's pretty close. Yeah, I think that I think that whole parcel is in flood way. This, yeah. this whole parcel would be, yes. Yeah. Just what's happening, there was a, a woman representing the FEMA people, well, Massachusetts version of and uh, they do not approve trailers in the floodway, uh -huh. even though the town does. But we're supposed to have a special permit, but nobody goes for a special permit. So it's kind of the wild west. Uh, it's the question of yeah, I have no idea how, how much they're going to yeah. enforce it. So. I don't know what the intent is to do with it. So I well, you know, there's going to be three or four trailers. No, I don't. I, I don't. I don't know that. Uh -huh. I would doubt it. No, not for the person buying it. Okay. I'm, I'm, I'm guessing he doesn't want trailers there. I mean, not three or four. There may be one. What's the matter? He doesn't think a trailer would make a nice boat? <laughs> well, it'd be, we got about 200 of them along the river. They would be stacked up along the Hoyo Dam. There you go. They would look good. Yeah, they would. Well, there's, there was a bunch of them in Hatfield. Well, no, Hatfield doesn't allow trailers, but Hatfield people are in the Hatfield. Oh, there are trailers on the river in Hatfield. There were last year on, on a piece of property that your sister owns. Yep. And they were, they were um, squatting. You know, 10 or 12 trailers in this little place, and nobody knew who owned it. That had a trailer there. Quite interesting. Several weeks ago, I don't know what meeting it was, but Steve Lewis was in here yep. talking about Esalon. Correct. And the board wanted to see parking at Esalon. And I wasn't at the meeting. I watched it on TV. I got contacted by the owner of Esalon to come and find out what exactly you guys are looking for. Are you looking just to see how many cars he can park with? You know, I want to that. see him, what he's going to do to get rid of the park, eliminate parking on a town common. Okay, so, I, I understand that, Jimmy, and I understand it's a bone of contention. But what I want to make sure I understand is, do you just want me to sh come back here with showing where the building is and, you know, 30, 40 spaces, whatever I can get? Is that what you're looking for? No, no I, think, I, think, I think we want to have there. his customers not park on the town common anymore, so he's well, got to direct really good But he needs that. Yeah, yeah. 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 He, he needs but direction. He what, what, and what are we looking for on the old Hadley property, the old Hadley garage Exactly. Property. How much of that space is going to be usable vis-a-vis -vis green space, parking, etc.? Good. Take, 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 take the Hadley, take your bottles old garage. Correct. Yes. How much? is Steve Lewis going to use yeah. 
and need, use, whatever it is for customers and parking, etc. Yeah. And then how much is available for that Esalon? Yeah. And will and that that re, that needs to eliminate Esalon parking on a town common. Okay. Well, that I don't know if is possible. We, we I know we talked about this quite a while ago when when Mr. Kraus was before the board, yep. and I asked about being able to park in the front yard setback, the 50 foot front yard setback on the Hadley Auto Service property yep. because I think it's better that they park there than on the common. Given the dimension and the size of the property, I don't disagree with that one bit. I have no problem if you park in the front 50 yard of the Hadley garage because given it's a pre-existing, both, both buildings are pre-existing from that concern. So parking, they already park in the front yard of Esalen, the front 50 foot. So parking, in my opinion, and only speaking myself, I don't know what the other members speak, feel, parking in the front yard of the, of the Hadley Auto Service is okay as well, because it'll get the, the parking off of the common and keep them where they should be on their property. Okay. And, and then the next question I think is how much other parking is available? And how much do we need, given the square footage of the Abala's garage, how much parking is going to be required to utilize that space and carve it up for various right. businesses? Okay, so what I can do is I will come up with a plan and I will m get as many parking spaces as I can on the Hadley Auto Service property. Yeah, correct. Thank and I will, I will say, I will show you, Steve Lewis is renting this. And it's probably, you know, if it's half the building, it's going to be at least a thousand square feet, which is going to mean he's going to need two thousand square feet of parking. But I think he said he needed four cars or something like that. So they said no customers are going to be there. Right. right. So I will mark off spaces for Steve Lewis Subaru, however many he, they tell me they need. Well, that's it, that's well, it's a pre-existing non-conforming uh, use anyway. It's not so. going to. That building is not going to conform to the current zone. Well, I, I would like to see how much space is available and how much That's right. Yeah. Before we get too carried away saying, I want to see this, I want to see this, do what you said. You have the building. How much parking can you put on that property? Okay. Yeah. And then bring it in to us and then we can talk. Yeah. Okay. And of course, obviously, get the details. How much does Steve Lewis Subaru need? Yeah. Okay, yeah. so let's say there's, just pick a number, let's say there's a thousand square feet of parking. Yeah. Okay, Steve Lewis needs 250. I'm just picking a number right, out of right, 10 years, nothing. I got you. Yeah. Okay, that means there's 750 available for ESO. Right. Okay, if that's the best we can do, let, let's see, I'm just talking as very, from just as a number. I mean, not, not real number, but just as a, you know, what can you get? What do they need? Well, let's see what's left over, and so then we can go from there. Okay. We need the square footage of the lot. Yeah. We need the placement and square footage of the buildings. Yeah. Uh, reasonable you, setbacks. Is is uh, that old, the wooden building of that? That's going to stay. The garage, the so-called garage. That 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 thing that's. I don't know. I'll find out. I can't imagine. Yeah, I know. He's that's going to stay. That's, that was falling down 20 years ago. Yes, yes. But, but as, yeah. to, as to the common, clearly, if the town wanted to stop people parking on the common, they would have stopped people parking on the yeah. common. They're, I mean, if they don't want to stop them, we can't. No, we can't. There's no. nothing we can do. But it, I think maybe part of the issue had been they didn't have any other place to put it. They didn't want to get in the way of a successful business. But if he has other space available, and the town puts up no parking signs That's along definitely. the common and enforces it, yeah. then... Well, I think um, the first step is put the no parking signs up, and uh, if it harms his business, tough. Well, that's not our call. Well, yeah, yeah that, that's not our call. But, however, Select let's, let's, the let's give, if he, exactly. if he has a place to put the parking, mm -hmm. then that's definitely a giant step in the right okay. direction. Okay. Only if people park there. Well, I think what he'll have to do is put signs up or something yeah. that say, 
parking. And I appreciate that finally I'm hearing from this board that the town is responsible for putting up no parking signs on their property. Because I have a similar situation at my property with the 5050 next door. It's an exercise place. It's that used to be the dance studio. Oh, yeah. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. So it's an exercise place, right? They've got a long, narrow parking lot. So people come to exercise, they don't want to park way out in the back and walk and get more exercise than they would from going inside. So they park on my property. Yeah. So or, I, I put, I put why, signs up. Why does it, why is that, that the only area of the common that people park the cars on? I guess it's the only business that... It's the only business. That that well, answer the, the question. No, there was, the question. Before Alina's rented the adjacent lot, right. correct. they were parking up, 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 okay. to, yeah. up, up to the bike path okay. on uh, that side as well. Yeah. 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 All okay. right. So I will get something together, hopefully okay. for the next meeting, so that we can at least get the ball rolling here. There was, okay. a, there was a book called in the, written in the 60s by Barry Commoner called The Tragedy of the Commons. Yeah. As long as everybody respects the common, everything's fine. But when one person decides to put two cows on it, and not one cow, you got a problem. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Okay, that's all I have this evening. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay. Very good. And I may s sit and listen for a little bit. That's fine. Yeah. The uh, wait, Joe and I. Where are you? Are we back with Steve Little? Yes. I, I have nothing to say. Oh, I was okay. just seeing okay. if I had to add. Okay. Joe and I went to uh, the, the Route Nine. Um, Construction thing. Proposed 25% design review. It was most informative, most very informative, in that they had what four presenters? They had that kind of like the, the guy that there were nine people there. But, but I think four of them spoke. They had a person that was in, going to be like the overall project manager for the time, for the, for the time being, at least for the design of it. They had a lady that was, who was, who was she? Uh, she was trans. Tra 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 oh, transportation? Yeah. yeah, to the transit. Were you there? Uh, I was there. I actually had seen the presentation. I was part of the focus group. Oh. So I had seen the presentation that afternoon. Oh. So I did come in and sit okay. in the back of the room, and I saw Mark Dunn had signed in. I thought you had signed in too, Mike. Did I see you there? The Mark was there. Mark was there. Mark was Mark there. there. But looking at the plan, it was very... Um, informative in that for the most part they're gonna this this project starts at the center of town goes all the way to South Maple Street and then the intersection of South Maple Street and Route 9 and then proceeds south on South Maple Street to the bike path and that's all the area of reconstruction the Hampshire Mall and Mountain Farmers Mall that are closest to Route 9 that are in line with each other are no longer going to be in line with each other after the reconstruction. They're going to be offset. So people can't drive across the uh, South Maple Street. At the north driveways. At the, yeah, yeah, at the, at the, at the, at the, at the, the driveway on South Maple Street close to Route 9, that intersection, they're going to be offset. So the existing driveway that goes to People's Bank will remain. But the driveway at Mountain Far at Hampshire Mall is going to be moved about 100 feet south. 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 Okay. Yeah. So you can still go across. You're just going to be down the street. And right. Yeah. There's going to be. It's going to be. It's not going to be a space shot across anymore. It's going to be a zigzag if you want to do that. And that whole South Maple Street is going to be like we saw at one of our meetings. I think it was at Mountain Far Mall was presenting how they were going to reconstruct it with a center turn lane and one lane in each direction. So it's going to be similar to Route 9. But anyways, Route 9 is going to have a center turn lane, one lane west, one lane east, a shoulder on each side, a grass strip. I forgot how wide the grass strip was. Six and, and a half feet. Hmm? Six and a half feet. Okay. Then they're going to have a walk bike path outside of that grass strip on each side and then there will be that will be the end of the right of way but the whole width between the center lane turn lanes um, east and west and all the other stuff is going to be 68 feet outside of right of way to outside of right of way some places they were talking and they, the, the, the takings along the route 9 are going to vary all over the place from as much as 
12 to 15 feet to as little as a few feet, depending where you are on Route 9 and what's there today. A um, couple of interesting things that I looked at. I didn't look at the center of town to see how close they were to the town hall. That was the one thing I didn't look at. But going towards East Street, um, and this is what was on the plan, Exotic Auto had a big X through it, and it says to be demolished. The uh, right-of-way was about, I know, I'd say, three or four feet from his garage doors that are there today, which means they're not taking the building, but he'll have no way to turn in and out of his garage doors. The only parking he would have is what's left on the east side of the building. Otherwise, that's... Well, and that, they, they are... Uh also talking, I'm not sure if it's part of this project, about uh, widening the East Street intersection okay. to add a uh, left turn lane and a center right lane. Okay. So they would they would dig into his uh, side right. parking too. Okay. So yeah, they, they bought the building. So that, that, that's, that, that, that was the only building that had an X to it. The green building across the street that they just put new siding on part of it, the back side of the building is already in Route 9. The one that they didn't put the siding on, so that part of the building is gone. And the building that just had the new siding put on, the right of way is, I would say, no more than six inches from the building. Maybe not even be that much. I mean, the way it had the lines drawn, it's hard to say, but it was right up against the building. That building was not noted to be taken. But I can't imagine somebody living there, but that's up to them, that's not my choice, our choice. Um, where literally you're well, quite that's the sidewalk is right. Be up to the it's not the building. What about the new Burkeum Law Office right there? Both of the offices on south side on the office. south side of Route Nine, where Randy is and all the rest of them, they lose, I would say, ten to fifteen feet oh, on gosh. average. I'm gonna well where I'm at right now. You and Lisa. Well, the, the right of way is 49 and a half feet wide currently. So it's going to go to 68 feet. So you're so about 10 feet if, on each if side. If they do it equally, it'll be 10 feet. So he'll, he'll, he, he, he'll be tight, but he'll still have enough room. About where he parks his cars in the front, that'll about be. Yeah, they're going to, I'll be, I'll be having uh, smash through <laughs> <laughs> he'll, he'll have, car sales. Yeah. They'll, 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 be, they'll be walking and be able to, touch, to polish his cars as he has them sitting there. They're going to they're gonna have to work with me and, you know, redo so that I can push back because that's ridiculous. That's going to be too close. Yep. And I think that whole bike path thing, as I said at the meeting, is ridiculous. Yes. But there's but, so, I mean, just every hundred feet, there's a new driveway. It's businesses, cars coming out. And even where Lisa is, they've got that big line of Arbor Vitae. Nobody's going to see a bike coming through there till they hit them. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But the answer to that is, you know, legitimate questions, the answer to that is we have no decisions or the ability to make changes. We were ordered from up on high. We're going to have bike paths and we're going to have sidewalks. And that's the way it's going to be. Who's coming before Baker? Paul Patrick. Patrick. Patrick was the one that put the edict in about any new major state yes. roads shall have walkways and bike paths on either side. And they said that the current Secretary of Transportation in the state will approve nothing if it doesn't have that. Yeah. So they said this is, this is a non-negotiable item. Oh, no so they did say that they were going to maintain it. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And it, it's, oh, I didn't hear that. Yeah. 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 They are going to plow the, uh, the bike path as well, so it'll they'll be feuding between themselves over yeah. who's throwing snow. Yeah. That's part of the reason why there's that six foot grass strip in there where possible. Okay. So that um, there is a place to park snow. Yeah. The uh, then of course I raised I raised the question about drainage. I said you're adding quite a bit of new impervious surface. Okay. And from about, I didn't say give a direct, but I said, you know, on the more, much of the easterly side, about from Spruce Hill to South Maple Street, it's all heavy clay. There's not much good drainage there. So if you put water in the ground today, two weeks later, you're going to have the same puddle of water in the ground. Coming this way, it's a different story. And I said, plus where a lot of the water drains, you don't see a problem right where the water drains. But if you go downstream, like last year particularly, 
where the water went through Goulet's field and some of the fields over here in Hadley, when it started to rain, they never got into the fields to harvest their crop because Route 9 water was flooding all the downfield fields. And, you know, you, if you're going to be very cognizant of how you're going to drain and separate and, and you're going to meet, you know, meeting whatever requirements are for, 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 for cleanliness, of, cleanliness of the water. And they said, yeah, we know that we're looking, you know, they, they didn't know about some of the drainage problems, about the, about the soils. And then when they talked about the bike path uh, going towards the malls, they said, well, the, what our, our feeling was there, the, the water from the bike path will just flow into the grass and infiltrate. <laughs> a person in the back said, did you hear what Jimmy said? The water doesn't soak into the ground. <laughs> and so, I mean, they, they did get, at the end of the meeting, they did say that we're going, they were going to be considering about a 75% review because the, like the first hour of the questions that were raised, it wasn't questions like, you know, not, I don't want it here, I don't want that, I don't want that. There were actually very valid questions about drainage and traffic and intersections and other stuff like that. So there wasn't like people saying, you know, it's a bad idea, don't do it. There was good stuff they were asking. And so I, they, at the end of the meeting, they did say there were, there's a, Good possibility they were going to have, excuse me, a, I think it's like a 75% review or something like that before the project is fully implemented to see what kind of changes have been done so that we can have a little input on it. That would be nice. The questions were good, ex except the statement from the guy from the Northampton Planning Board. How wonderful it is. We're adding two new bike paths, and I encourage Hadley to plow the existing bike paths so we can use it all oh, yeah. year round. Yo, and uh, North, North, the other people. Northampton owns its bike path. Yes. DCR owns our bike path. Okay. Yes. So now, we're not plowing. Well. Question to you, Ed, as well as you. Uh, how do they handle his land taking? I mean, is he negotiated before, or do they take it and they'll they'll take it and negotiate after the fact? So I mean, they'll they'll make a what's called pro forma offer. Uh, they'll they'll do an appraisal. They'll make an offer. And you either accept it or you uh, and they don't care. take it to court. And they don't care if you destroy a livelihood, as in the case of Exotic Auto. Well, uh, they're going to compensate. Exotic Auto is going to get a boatload of money. A yeah. lot of money for that. Can they can they show what the future earnings would have been off that piece of property and discount it back to the present and say this is the real value? That is yes, they can. They can try that if they. Yeah, okay. They can, does right. it record cash? So could we make it up? So. Um, <laughs> There is, uh, yeah, I, I did, they haven't done it recently. I did one up in Belchertown where somebody uh, wanted to put a subdivision in, and the town took it for, by eminent domain for open space. And we, we went to court, and uh, you've got like four times what the, the town had offered. Uh -huh. um, so there it's. But it, okay, for, yes, for a public purpose, it's not the. the the fact of taking is not negotiable. They're they're going to take it. The question is, how much are they going to pay for it? Yeah. Thank you. Okay. So anyway, and then there was you know it was, it was I thought it was a pretty good meeting. It was really informative. Learned a lot, from, especially about the sixty eight feet and a lot of other stuff. Um, some of these businesses were impacted, obviously, and, and houses and homes. Not that there's that many um, more than others, but for the most part. People lose a, a, some of the front yard, um, and it's obviously anytime you lose your front yard like that, you know, 10 or 12 feet, it hurts. But you can probably still continue to make a living because most of the time you're not doing much in the front yard except the nice yard. So we're going to get a lot of pre-existing non-conforming uses. Yeah, you know, it's like when they widen Route 9 on the um, between Amherst and the malls, and they took. The front yard of McDonald's. Uh, McDonald's was set back 50 feet. Now it's only 35 feet. Or now East Hampton Savings Bank's only 35 feet. So yeah, that, that's they're gonna make a lot of. And it's well, it is. You know, we can't. Can we make that decision, or does it have to go to the zoning board of appeals? Make what decision? Pre-existing non-conforming. 
Yes, if it's the, you're okay. selling it to some new business and they... It's like a, if, it's like a force majeure, right? If there is a, an expansion of a pre-existing non-conforming, that has to go to the CBA. Okay. But if someone can fit into the, just recycle it as is, that does not require a change. Um, so I, we were up in Maine, uh, went to a family wedding in Kennebunkport and get off the highway in Wells. And the Wells to the turnoff for Kennebunkport is very similar to Route 9. Uh, a lot of hotels, a lot of restaurants, and it all has, it, it is the three lane model. It's not quite as wide because it doesn't have the grass strip and the bike path, but it has a bike lane, a, a, probably a bike pedestrian lane on both sides, plus the three lanes. And um, by and large, it seemed to work. It was a busy weekend. It was the weekend before 4th of July, so there was a lot of activity up there. And uh, it seemed to be working pretty well. With one exception, people will come out of people come into the traffic. If there's no one coming in the ongoing lane, you want to go in the opposite lane. People come in, cross the first lane, and then drive in the middle, middle like it's a uh, on ramp. Right. Yeah. Um, that, 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 I can see that being that. Yeah. They start giving a few tickets out for that. Then they, you know, that's when you can start to cl clear that out. Somebody was asking me about, you know, they're, they're talking about the new rotary that they're going to be at 91. And they says, you know, they're horrible. I says, I don't know what the rotary is going to look like. They says, you do a lot of travel and all. What do you think? I says, a properly designed rotary, I love. I do too. New York loves them. They are, I swear, they're at every, of 87, once you get off past Albany, almost all the way up, every exit is a rotary. They have one for the uh, north ramp, one for the south ramp. So that you get off the thing, you go into a rotary, and there's hardly any traffic lights, and they work great. I like said the trick is properly designed. I mean, I like them. They work. They work great. Um, however, you know, I mean, I'm, I'm not a traffic guy. I couldn't tell you what a properly designed rotary is. I just know that the result is when they're well designed, they work very well. Yeah, I can't imagine how they're going to do it over here. They're only supposed to be one rotary, totally. too. That's what because gets me. Because you're going to have to have a large enough radius for a 52-foot trailer. Yeah, I, I don't It doesn't get it. take a lot for the, look at the... Look at the rotaries over by Atkins. Or the, the, Those are not big rotaries. Well, the one, the one in downtown Amherst uh, on East Pleasant Street, that one is tight. Tight. You tight. can see where the buses, yeah, oh, the no, buses no, go no. up on it. But, but, but the, one, the, the ones that are in... Atkins uh, are fine, yeah. Atkins are fine, and the thing is, they're single lane, but they got the sloped inside curb. And when you see an act, a, a semi drive around, the semi hugs the outside of the tractor and the wheels right up on the curb. You just got to, that's, that's, you know, the other thing is, you got to go slow. If you, you hit those curbs going 40, 50 miles an hour, first of all, you're not going to make it. And you may have a few cut tires because of the way the, 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 the well, inclines are. A little history over at Atkins. They, they built the rotaries and they discovered that they didn't own the land, the county owned the land. And they had to come to the Council of Governors and they had to Oh, really? Yeah. One of the last uh, real things I think the institution's done. Okay. So in, anyway, that's about it on the Route 9 of reconstruction. Now, something I was thinking about, from what this lady was is proposing and some other things that are coming down, our site plan approval addresses site plan site plan approval in the business districts. Good night, guys. Good night. Good night. Good night. And all of our business districts and expansions of stuff. And what Joe asked, and this is why I kind of said, yeah, they were exempt. However, there is before it becomes a problem. I'm wondering if we should amend section 8.2, sections that require site plan approval. Right now, any non, no, uh, what does it say? No, 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 no. Exemptions, oh yeah. 
any building used exclusively for agriculture, for horticulture, or floriculture is exempt from site plan approval. I wonder if we should have put either in 8.3 or in 8.2, 8.2 says the sections that require site plan approval, something along the idea of a retail business located in non-business zones over, say, a thousand square feet, be it a brewery or a farm stand or whatever, and review it for compliance with site plan approval. The reason I say that is right now, we've only got two. Well, we've got boys' work, but that's, that's a little bit different over there. We have three. This one will be four. And they're relatively small. Most are working well. But what if somebody comes in and wants to put in a larger farm stand? say, a few thousand square feet, with parking, with everything else, with no control on a drainage. We have nothing to say about it. You mean like an Atkins or Randall's? Yeah. Yeah, you know, because I see it, I can see it happen. These, these, these places could be successful. Atkins sells 75% local produce. Yeah. Between meat and everything else. Most of what they sell is probably grown. I would say, I would say certainly 50% is grown in the state. And they qualify for the ag exemption. Well, gee, look at the traffic they generate. Look at, you know, and on and on. So before something like that gets out of control. But on I, the other hand, we'll be we'll be encouraging or fostering something like that. Because right now, you could probably deny it. Well, we, we can't okay. deny it, so let's go, let's go to um, the exact language of the state law. 48 section three, subjects which zoning may not regulate. So no zoning um, no zoning nor, nor shall such ordinance or bylaw prohibit, unreasonably regulate, or require a special permit for the use of land for the primary purpose of commercial agriculture, aquaculture, silviculture, horticulture, floriculture, or viticulture nor prohibit, unreasonably regulate, or require a special permit for the use, expansion, reconstruction, or construction of structures thereon for the primary purpose of those, including facilities for the sale of produce, wine, and dairy products, provided that, and then there's the formula. Um, um, so, it looks like that, since site plan approval is a special permit, yeah, it looks like we can't require a special permit. Okay. Um, um, but maybe that is something you can reasonably regulate. That's the well, you you can, but it is. Uh, Remember, our site plan approval is not a special permit under the special per definition of a special permit. It's only a special permit for the rezoning, for the legal review purposes. Site plan approval cannot prohibit. Yeah, the site plan, right. The only reason it's a special permit is for the legal challenge. What was the other word? Site plan review is in site plan Site plan, we have a site plan review. We, we changed the naming. We, we changed we change it from site plan yeah. review to site plan well, approval. Well, we can't prohibit if they come in and tell us that it's something that it's not. They, 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 if they try to start interpreting our zoning bylaw they, or state they, law, they, 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 yeah, yeah, we're, we're getting off this topic with that. As long as you're complying with the law, we can't do that. Site plan review, when we went to site plan approval, it was an approval process versus review. Yeah. Just a play on work, but it basically was, it was only because we canceled, we, we 
took out the first one, but it's pretty much still the same bylaw. Under site plan review, if we approve something, the appeal was the appeal of the building permit whenever that was issued. Correct. And that could be up to 18, two years later. Three now, years. Would know. now it's three years. So what happened is, I'll just use me and you. I'm given site plan of, of re approval or site plan review. And it's not a special permit. You don't like the decision. You want to appeal it. You, you've got to wait until I apply for a building permit. That means you need to keep coming to the building inspector and saying, hey, did Jimmy apply for building permit? Did Jimmy apply for building permit? Did Jimmy apply for building permit? And you have 30 days to appeal to the issuance of a building permit. So once a month, for the next three years, or say 21 months, you need to keep asking Tim if I've issued. Why can't, yeah, why can't I just tell Tim that when he applies for a burning permit, let me know? What if he forgets? What if he forgets? What if he forgets? He has no obligation. He has no obligation to let you know. Uh -huh. Okay, and if he forgets, you're you're done. So to protect your investment, you need to keep bugging him. And he obviously is not liking it. Yeah. You're not liking it. Yeah. And I'm sitting back hoping to get under the radar. So finally I apply. You appeal the building permit. Meanwhile, I've invested all of this design time, lined up all my contractors, and now I'm stopped. In the meantime, during that duration, I always spent whatever time to do all the kind of stuff. So you appeal it. Now I got whatever time frame before it gets to court. It could be a couple of more years. So what tip tip, you know, not unreasonable. I've wasted four years for this project. And you've wasted or you spent a lot of time trying to get this done. Whereas with a special permit, it's approved, it's typed, it's filed with the town clerk, 20 days. That's your appeal, 21 days, no appeal, you're done. You can't do anything about it, and I get my building permit. And it was very clean, it's very clean, cut and dry, and that's why we did that, because it was just an undue burden on a lot of things. And we have seen, like, the, these guys with the medical marijuana, they, they did nothing for two years. Oh, it's gonna be two years to yeah. apply that. And they weren't, they weren't dilly-dallying, they were trying to get all their ducks in order. And, you know, so if anybody didn't like it, it was a heck of a project in the duration. So, that's, you know, long story about why we have the special and, permit. And the ZPA didn't, uh, is this, I think this came up originally with the, uh, that's right, you the original appeal, Walmart. You appealed to the ZBA. And the ZBA said, why are we having a second public hearing to go over everything that you just went over? Yes. So they were not... Yeah, yeah that's you, you appeal the building inspector decision to the ZBA, not to the courts. So you go to the ZBA, you get a 60-day decision. Now you would appeal their decision to the courts. It was just, it was, it was ridiculous. So, like I said, the site plan review, site plan, <coughs> even though it's a special permit, it does, it's not like it's a special <coughs> permit and that we're saying you can do this. It's only for the review process. So why don't I ask Joel Bard for some guidance on <coughs> yes. how how much we can regulate. Yes, that's <coughs> because, yeah. So I know that when there was someone who there was someone who was expressed the interest in the um, putting in a commercial greenhouse in the fields where um, the lot your library annex was going to go. Uh, this was 15 years ago, and uh, Jim had stories about the commercial greenhouses in upstate New York, and we have the experience with the commercial greenhouse in North Adelaide. And we had no way of saying no to that. Um, and we probably still don't. Uh, if they want to grow whatever with whatever kind of lighting, uh, agriculturally mm -hmm. exempt. Mm -hmm. um, did you ever get an answer from Joel on the uh, erosion sediment control bylaw? I did not. Okay, so I will this. ask him again. Because I got a meeting next week and uh, we're going forward because I didn't realize this, but um, was it Pat? Yeah, Patty from PVPC that's working with uh, Ken Comia on our rewrite said that uh, Koppelman and Page <coughs> has written some of the bylaws already for other towns and they've gone um, they wrote, she says they wrote some kind of an article about incorporating them, incorporating one into the other. I says, great. I says, they probably find a, found a way around to do it. 
We're just going to find out <coughs> how they did it. So we're going forward that, for the most part, our zoning bylaw on erosion and sediment control is going to be greatly simplified to just a paragraph or two that's going to reference the general bylaw. And that's what we're going forward with. Okay, so we'll clear those out. Anybody going to that meeting regarding housing given by Pioneer Valley? No, I got no, I got a lower class meeting tomorrow, the usual monthly okay. meeting with us. Just the, talking about parking. Now the two for one ratio, isn't that generally for retail purposes? I mean, that's what it was intended to regulate. And I'm just thinking back to Brent Banis when he came in with ideal movers and he wanted to put up a two or three story building there. And we were applying that bylaw to him, and he basically was a half a million dollars he had to give us. And I, I don't yeah, know. Yeah, and that's I, think true. Really, yeah, no. I think we should really look at something well, like well, that. Well, the only a, a couple things. To answer your question, first of all, people argue that all the time with us. But then you have an auto parts zone, that a store that only needed a couple of parking places. Then it changes to Echelon Cafe that needs. Well, that's retail. No, but what it how, how do you predict that? What a change it use. It went, it went, it went, it went from a, a, a auto parts store to a, uh, a restaurant. A restaurant. So clearly a reasonable man in the okay. case of Ideal Movers would say, yeah, this doesn't make any so sense here. I did talk to Wayne Fike, uh, specifically, it was, it was in another context about, about parking standards. and. Wayne said that yeah, there are there are books you can go to for the standards, yeah. but it is, and Wayne is the par, uh, planning director in Northampton. Um, a lot of it is arbitrary, and a lot of it depends on what you want to accomplish. Um, so Northampton, for example, does not require any parking spaces for new construction or uh, renovations in the central business district because they want to steer you to the parking garage. Mm -hmm. um, so, and which is the same thing. So, uh, you know, they, they're, it's really hard to find a bright line standard of what, what is enough. Um, it's not to say we couldn't make some variations, but... Uh, it just bothered me that he wanted to conduct business. Mm -hmm. There's going to be yeah. some good tax money coming to the town of Hadley. We told him he needed yeah. twice yeah. as much parking as a reasonable man would say, yeah, this is absurd. This is absurd. And, and, and there will always be a case sure. where I wish we didn't have that. When uh, somebody wants when, when, when I think it was the uh, climbing gym was first proposed. They wanted to put board and batten siding on it. It was a gorgeous looking building, but vertical siding was not yeah. permitted yeah. because it was, it was the original thing about the metal. And, you know, so you have an exception to the rule every now and then. For the, my, uh, my feeling is, for the most part, what we have works in probably 95% of the cases. If they have the land, they don't have to build it. Okay? As long as they can support the two for one parking, there's a number of places that never built the two for one parking. But if it ever is needed, the land is there in case they, they could do it. And yeah, you know, ideal movers want to squeeze that extra, extra spots in. But to rewrite the zoning bylaw to accommodate one or two people just like this well, thing with the. I'm uh, saying, well, I'm saying, here's non, a, non retail, we should have a different bylaw or. Some waiver for non-retail businesses. You're never going to have the parking coming in. Can they get? Can they generate us a, a, a traffic study or how many people show up there on a daily basis? If you how want, many people go in and out? Tell you what. Tell they you, sell. Tell you what. If you're that concerned with it yeah. and you want to write something, put it together and we'll look at it. Get Joe okay. Bart to something like that, <laughs> <don't> we? <laughs> okay. Just like this thing, they got the at one of our at a, one of our last meeting with with the I think it was a monthly lead, uh, group meeting that we have at the town hall. Tim was talking about the problem with uh, trailers on a river. Oh. And wait a minute, let me finish. Let me let me go. Let me let me talk about this. And 
how it's very tough to regulate them. Both from the building inspector and fire chief and police chief all have problems doing that because you get them out, they're back and get them out. You know, they, they said it's you know it, they're, they're trying to only basically have fun. I don't, I don't disagree with that. And Ken says, you know, we should rewrite the bylaw to do this and this and everything else for the trailers. And what he said kind of made sense. Then I'm thinking about it. Wait a minute. We're going to spend. And because of the problem we had getting this passed at town meeting, I don't think it would pass town meeting. But yet, if we rewrote, if we wanted to allow four or five trailers on a parcel, that's what he's proposing, with a fee and a month and a yearly renewal permit and everything else, and get some money out of this. And so, was it you that raised the question, or somebody raised the question, that okay, you do that now, I'm. Own enough land to put five trailers. Yeah, I'm going to rent it out. Yeah. It was that our, it was our, at our meeting that we had? And Joyce said, "Why would you do that?" Because you can make money exactly. doing it. Okay, so he can he's allowed to put five trailers. It's not going to be his buddies. It's going to be five people he doesn't know renting out, paying a decent amount of money to get his money. He's going to he's going to make money on the deal. Nothing says you can't do that. We're going to go through all this trouble to rewrite the, this bylaw to accommodate what? A couple dozen landowners along the river? We have better things to spend our time on, to be honest with you. We got definition to do it. All these other things in the bylaw we want to get straightened out. The bylaw is the bylaw. If they can't un enforce it, well, it's no worse than it is today. When the state comes along and slaps their hands, they're going to have to do something. But we got better, like my opinion is, we have better things to do. Than to rewrite that bylaw, only to probably have a failed town meeting anyway. So. Well, then, if we defy the federal government, which doesn't allow trailers in the flood way, Route Nine again is that, federal, that, federally funded. That's for the board of selectmen to have have the building zoning enforcement officer and building inspector address. Okay. Because we, by opinion, we have better things to work to put our, our, our time on our planning for on zoning bylaws. It's amazing. Than We're the only town that seems to have trouble. Hatfield said no trailers. A few trailers were up. Um, yeah. They're gone. They're, they're all in Hadley now. Northampton has them. Not many. They got that homeless shelter there. Oh, they got they got the whole Rainbow Beach over there. Yeah. There, there's there's more than a few trailers there. There's probably 30, 30 more trailers. Most of them are down there riding around. Mm -hmm. When was the last time you went over to check out how many trailers were in Northampton? Last summer, I went. Really? Yeah. Yeah, you go down on Rainbow Beach? You gonna go Not out in Northampton. I went half to you, 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 you gonna you gonna go you gonna drive in the river to see where the trailers? Yeah. yeah. Going from the land, you don't see much. You don't even see many. Tra you, don't, you don't even see that many trails in Abbey, the land. Mm -hmm. Drive the rain. I mean, it's been well, that by a lot passed by one vote. That's why I'm saying it'd be tough, tough, tough to get it We're passed again. Yeah. We're going to talk about this? Yeah. Uh, no. No, no. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, I have nothing else. Oh! Staff meeting tomorrow morning. Yeah, I'm going to be there. Okay, I'm going to go too. The, okay. the, the document management. Uh, oh! Talk about that. Uh, so, yeah, uh, there's a grant for a partnership with the city of Northampton to implement an electronic document management service. So, we want to learn what that is all about. What does that mean? What does it mean? And how, how do we access it and the like? Uh, I guess our computer's not connected to the, to the town network, whatever that means. They did something on Friday. Okay. So I don't know. But if, even if that computer is linked in, all of our planning board data is on your computer and my it's computer. Right. Yeah, we got to transfer. And even after it, it's linked, it, it put onto the thing, you and I both do so much work at home. We're not going to come to this computer whenever we want to do something. And I don't know if there's a way we could call up from home. Probably not. Uh, I think they're talking about web-based document access. So that should be. We'll find out. So for instance, we can access. We don't want to access our file. I can access. I have the password somewhere to access the planning board page on the town website now, okay. which I can do from home. I just haven't bothered oh, okay. to do it. So but yeah, we can access just our file on a, on a, on a server, yeah. that's all we need. Yeah. 
but there's two parts. It's one is these documents that are in the document management, and right. then the other documents that are on our server that we don't have for public consumption. Right. Like all my templates for making decisions. Uh, right. Um, okay. Well, so I want to learn about yeah, that. Yeah, we'll too. see. See what it is. Okay. Um, commercial development protocol. Um, you want to just talk about that a little bit? Commercial development. Board. That was that meeting uh, with uh, uh, June twentieth. I don't. Even, I was there. I'm not sure if you yeah. made it or you might have made it. I don't think so. But okay. Select board. There was a meeting. Uh, planning board. Me. Building inspector. Fire chief. Police. Uh, I thought I had sent this around to everybody, but maybe yeah. I didn't. I thought you would comment. I thought on I, it. I thought I would you, do that. Yeah, I think you did, and you commented on it. You said something about the 35 days was. Oh, oh, oh that yes, yeah, yeah, yes, 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 right. Although I checked the bylaw, and 35 days is what the bylaw says. I, I, I realize that, but I just want to make sure okay. that they don't hold that as 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 the gospel, because right okay. now we we hold public hearing before the 35 is up. Okay. So the gist of it is that there is. There are ongoing grumblings on the back end after we do our permitting. Then uh, they start applying for the building permit, and then they're shocked to find out about the sewer impact fee, which uh, they never had heard about before. And the planning board said it was okay. Um, and I was emphasizing we don't we don't overrule anyone's jurisdiction, even the way the bylaw is written that fire department is supposed to make all of its comments to us, that still doesn't mean that they can't say afterwards, oh, yeah, that doesn't mean fire code. Um, so um, what I said I would do is really, I'm going to change the back end, my boilerplate of uh, site plan approval decisions to really emphasize that we only speak for the zone, zoning bylaw. And we do not speak for the other departments. It's in there already, but um, there are surprises that are popping up. And some of them are unavoidable. Uh, Tim was very, people were calling the police because the Mountain Farms Mall driveway was closed for a week, for two weeks. Calling the police. Uh, and Tim said. I was, was at that meeting too. It, this was kind of like. Spinning wheels. Yeah, yeah. It, it, yeah it, it, it was a great session. It could be easy. So, so some, some of the things, uh, you know, some of the things. Uh, Janice Stone said that the uh, conservation commission is not getting copies of the plans, but they are. They are. Though she on his slip, he didn't have them listed. I always put a copy in their mailbox. Right. And um, Mike Spanknable said he never got the plans for the. Uh, medical uh, desco or whatever it is. Well, I'm sure they were sent to him. It was the word. He, he 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 got them, but it was he missed it on, on the which which one medical just desco desco was in the industrial park. Oh, they they got plans for that. But what he was complaining about, and he said he missed it on the new dentist building, the old Stan's dentist building. The radiuses are 15 feet on the corners. The fire truck can't make 15 foot radius, and he missed that. So he says, you know, he said, we've got these. He says, you know, I don't, I, I didn't look at that. He said, I didn't, I didn't catch that. I says, Mike, give me a list of certain things, not from the building, but from the property, that you want to be reviewed. We can have the reviewing engineer look for that. Mm -hmm. I says, not a problem. I said, but the design, but the, the, the plot plan. You know, we've got the zoning things he looks at. We could give him a list of whatever you want to make sure that meets for turning radius and any corners. That's not a big deal. I, we've got to know what to look for, that's all. Um, so police have not been getting one. I think you've been sending I, I, I put one, it's, it's the mailbox downstairs of police and fire, and I put it into that mailbox. Okay. So bylaw calls for police, one for police, one to fire. I'm, th I'm thinking that Dennis Huckowitz didn't want to bother with it. So he said, leave it to the fire department. Uh, no, there are plans that we have that were signed off by both Dennis and the fire, and, and Keatsa. Okay. They used to look at They, when Hucky was in there and Keatsa, they both used to look at them together. Okay. It right. sounded like they want a, a 
another person, like an ombudsman, to create a job that they're not doing themselves. So I think we've set a separate set now. I think we we bylaw calls for nine. We've been telling people to bring less, but I think we really do need to go back up to nine. Okay. Um, and I think uh, at the last, I, I think I said to keep nine copies of, of the plans. Because I says, you know, they, they, they didn't want, the Historical Commission doesn't want any part of it anymore, so they don't get one. I haven't put it in the Historical Commission box because they, last year they what said they happened to that commission? They just they, disappeared. They, I, I don't know. Well, you get a couple of busy bodies who retired. Tom McGee was, uh, yeah. he wanted to have, have his nose and everything. Uh, so once he left, they didn't have the time for it. Yeah. Uh, but they are also in the, bylaw, so uh, maybe some change we'll have to make in the bylaw. Yeah. Um, the other thing, um, some of it is, doesn't really, they, they, they're suggesting a pre-construction conference, um, which will not involve us in all likelihood, but that will have you know, the police, fire, building inspector, DPW sit down with the I think that that works. Don't shake your head. They should. They should be doing it. But but what we have. They to, do it anyways. The the good developers have that, all their, their, Yeah, but it's not the good developers that are the problem. I, I totally agree. Uh, I totally agree. So uh, <clears throat> I've always said that the the big developers, you know, the <clears throat> WS developments of the world, are very happy with our site plan approval bylaw because it is so detailed. It's a cookbook. Yeah. And they march through the steps and. They come out the other end. Uh, it's people who don't read it and try to cut corners and then say, oh, but you didn't say I had to do that. I, I thought you were excusing me from it. Well, it's in the bylaw. We didn't waive it, so yeah. you're doing it. <clears throat> um, so uh, the other thing I had here was that uh, I'm not sure about uh, planning board incorporating or appending each department's recommendation to the final decision. I don't think that... I, I don't think we could. Yeah, I don't. I, I think that you know, that's something that I'll, I'll make a comment on that. Uh, so, um, but the idea is just try to get everybody working more closely together. I think um, uh, Chris from DPW wants to be more in the mix. Um, yeah. I think the police department wants to be more in the mix. Um, I think. Bank tables are it's like Nixon, they're they're both a little overworked. Um, it's trying to juggle too many things, but this is what he should be doing. Um, He's speaking of Chris, can I change his uh, the new subdivision that's going in on uh, Shatter. off Shattuck Road. Yeah. Yeah. The uh, the road entrance to Shattuck Road has a big dip in it and water stands there every time it rains. It doesn't go into the uh, detention pond. So just for everybody's knowledge, we should be made aware of that because... Well, it, it then uh, when they come in for the first... But come in for, come somebody uh, maybe should tell... I don't know who you tell. Do you tell the developer? Do you yeah. tell... Yeah, yeah, the developer. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but we tell who tells the developer. This is the whole point about this. Who tells the developer? We, you call them. So, so here's yeah. Here's the pro Here's the the gap. But I think that is something that maybe having a planning director would make a difference with, although not as big a difference. Tim seems to think a planning director would solve everything. Um, but um, there are you know we're a permitting board. Once we permit it. We don't know if it ever gets built. We don't care if it ever gets built. That's why the um, building inspector, enforcement officer should be under the auspices of the planning board. Well, it can't be. State law says, State law says not. So. Well, how is Wayne Fighting doing it? Um, He's a planning director. He's the planning director. Okay, we call him planning director. But it's all under the auspices of the city council there because everybody's appointed. Belcher Town? Uh, planning director does not, just does planning. These subdivisions and special permits. 
he does not oversee the building department. I don't know how they do it in any other uh, So again, that's the difference when you have the structure where everything's appointed. You can mix and match differently than you can when we have an elected board. But I did look it up once, and the building, zoning enforcement officer has to work with the select board. That's, that's right. I remember seeing that right in, right in Chapter 48. Um, so, um, but the, the gap is that you get something like the, the, the marijuana dispensary is a fine example. They were permitted two and a half years ago and did nothing. And then all of a sudden they're doing things, and but they're doing things through other departments. And um, they were making changes in the site as they were going along, and we explicitly say no alterations without prior approval. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, after two and a half years, people forget. So I think you know, having more of a uh, what I'm going to say, what I'm going to do is just tighten up the decisions so that um, I'm very clear that there are a limited decision for limited purposes. And I don't want anything in there that someone can come back to later and wave in Chris's face or Spank Naples' face and say, look, the planning board said it was OK. Um, just want to make very sure that we have limited jurisdiction. Well, that's and, a good idea. Yeah. Um, I, have, I have some boilerplate in there subject to approval of other boards if and as required. But apparently, that's not catching people's attention. Yeah. They don't want it. about the, uh, I didn't, the, the uh, certified mail didn't arrive before I posted the, um, and we don't have to go into executive session, so what is this, Citarelli? The PB, um, the appeal is in the hands of town council. Mr. Kill has been retained by the property owner. So that would be an interesting one. So we'll see how that plays out. Um, I suspect I will start putting that uh, on the agenda for future meetings, but um, I am not going to put a standing executive session notice yeah, in because. There will be very little confidential information. I, I did check. We don't. We have a copy, not of the mailing label, but of the abutters list. Okay. I looked, okay. I, I looked today, so we have a copy of the abutters list. It was mailed out. Um, when was the public hearing in March? I think the first one. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That the public hearing in March. I have the abutters list. So um, the uh, what Joel. It, how we do it is we ask for two copies of the abutters on mailing labels, and some people just give us the mailing labels. Apparently, that one they gave us the, the printout too. Yeah. Um, when we have the two copies on mailing labels, Jim uses what consumes one set to send out notices. I consume the second set, so we don't have anything in our record of who was on the abutters list. So, if nothing else, I think we'll just make a photocopy of it downstairs before we. Use it. Yeah. If people don't give us a separate abutters list, and they're also um, um, we have not insisted on a certified abutters list. Uh, what I learned from talking to Dan Zadonic is that the abutters list available through the online database is only updated periodically. Whereas the abutters list that Dan maintains on his database is as current as his information is. So um, if someone buys a house, in G if, if the data is uploaded in He's December, on the mail list. He is. OK, great. So if somebody buys a house in January, uh, but the it was 
was uh, the abutters list was updated in December, that name would not necessarily appear online until maybe June. Um, but if you get ask Dan for a certified mailing list, he will include every name that he has. So, um, okay, well that's good to know that he was. Um, so, um, anyway, I'll just add it to the agenda um, so we can discuss it going forward. Okay. All right. I have nothing I have else. Nothing else. Well, we adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any meeting of history. Thank you, and thank you, John. <laughs>